okay, think about this. The more evidence I have, the less faith I have in that thing or the less faith I have to use. Do you know how many hundreds, hundreds of thousands of people I have seen healed over the last 20 years? What does that mean? That means that, now understand, my faith in God is stronger than ever. At the same time, it's weaker than ever. Why? Because it's barely necessary anymore because I've seen so much proof. I have so much physical evidence that I can't look at the physical evidence. I have to go back to this and say, I know anything that's happened is because I believed your word before it happened. Amen? So, but the reason I lay hands on the sick is real simple. There's only one reason, right? And that's Mark 16, 18. Believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Isn't that simple? That's the only reason I lay hands on the sick. That's, that's the promise of God that I had faith in. And if I have faith in it, I have to do something because action is part of the ingredients of faith. If you don't act, you can do all the others. But if you don't act, now, and, oh, okay, I have to explain act. Sometimes the action you need, and listen carefully, this is going to sound strange. Sometimes the action you need to do as an element of faith is nothing. Okay. <laughs> but so what, what I mean, okay. <clears throat> Let me give you an example. Uh, Moses is leading the children of Israel across the Red Sea. The Egyptian army is coming behind them. They're all ready to give up. Think they're all going to die. Moses tells them, shut up. That's the first thing he tells them, shut up. Hold your peace, is the King James way of saying it. Isn't it funny? They start talking, he says, no, 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 hold your peace. In other words, you're losing your peace. You ever notice that? You start talking, worry, fear, you're losing your peace. Shut your mouth, keep your peace, hold your peace. You don't hold your peace by talking doubt and unbelief. Okay? So he said, hold your peace. Shut your mouth. Then what did he say? The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Now the amazing thing is, he tells them, then the next thing Moses tells them is this, stand still and see the salvation of God. He did not say, run. Here they come. Everybody run. God's going to stop them, but you better run because he might not stop them before he gets to you. No, he didn't do that. He said, stand still. What is standing still? You're standing in faith. I believe God's going to take care of that Egyptian army, and I ain't going to run. And so you stand. And sometimes standing, we're even told that in the New Testament, having done all to stand, stand therefore. Stand. You notice it talks about running a race, but he didn't say run away in fear. So we are running a race. But when it comes time to face our giant, we stand still, and if necessary, we run toward him. But if you're going to run toward him, never run toward your giant with your mouth shut. Amen. Just like David, he ran toward the giant telling him, this day, I'm going to take your head off your shoulders. And all he had was a sling, which means he was looking at Goliath's own sword. He said, how do you know that? Because that's what he killed him with. He took his head off with Goliath's own sword and then took the head and the sword and took it away after they chased the, the Philistines all the way back to their own territory. So never run at your giant with your mouth closed. If you're going to run at him, be speaking the word of God. Let him know it is written. You're going down. It is written. I'll still be standing. It is written. God is with me and he's not with you. And whenever you stand like that, then God is with you and he will stand with you. He will go before you. He will cover your back. Why? Because he will completely surround you and take care of you. Amen? Amen. Now, 